Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with a battle to the death for you. Today we have the Spider-Co Gail Bradley 2 versus the Spider-Co Kapara. I was not planning on doing this quite this fast. I thought I was going to wait a few more days, but it's been a holiday weekend and I've had the Kapara in my pocket a whole lot. This is a brand new knife, but I've had it permanently in my pocket since the day I got it. And I think I've put enough miles on it to compare it against the Gil Bradley 2, another knife I really like. I really like both of these, so I really want to do this comparison, and I'm going to explain why. First couple reasons are very easy. Others are uh, take a bit more explanation, so bear with me for a moment. But first of all, they're both Taiwan Spider Coast, both roughly the same size, both uh, rough in the same price category. We'll talk a lot about that at the end. But, uh... Also, uh, they're both knives that I didn't know I wanted until I got my hands on them. I didn't care much for the Gail Bradley 2 when I saw it in pictures. I picked this one up way earlier this year, and it was literally, I was at a shop, and I picked it up and put it in my hand, and I thought, oh my god, why don't I own one of these? And I bought one. The Capara was not planning on buying it. We had other Spider Co's for 2018 on pre-order. Um, they've been taken forever. Saw a couple of reviewers that I really trust, uh, Dr. Frunky and JT's Knife Life, both reviewed it and really liked it. And I got one, and as soon as I got it in my hand, loved it and really like it. So they both have kind of found their way into my uh, permanent rotation in very similar ways. And they're both very slicey blades. There's a lot of ways these two compare. As I said in the review of this, which I meant to be a first impressions, but it wound up being kind of a review. <laughs> um... I, I, I think they're both similar in a whole lot of ways, and I said I was going to do this, and then you guys have been peppering my email box asking about it, so here you go. How does these work? Just to give you guys a refresh, if you've never watched one of these before, we have seven categories. We have design and aesthetics is one category, quality, blade, ergonomics, carry, deployment, and value, and then we're going to add up a score at the end, and we'll pick a winner. Uh, We'll see how it goes this time. This is going to be really close with these. Uh, I've I've scored some of it, but a couple of categories I'm going to kind of score live because um, I'm still kind of undecided about it myself. So we'll see what happens when it comes to it. Let's do some stats before we get too much farther. First of all, we have the uh, Gail Bradley 2. I changed my uh, pages here. Hold on one moment, please. Uh, it is uh, $156 retail. Looking at M4 steel, which is awesome. Uh, you're looking at a, a stainless steel liner lock. The uh, carbon over G10, typical of what uh, Tai Chung has done for a long time. These uh, laminate peel ply uh, scales. Uh, the standard Spider Co. pocket clip. And as far as the dimensions go, you have an overall length of 8.4 inches, blade length of 3.6 inches. You have a blade thickness of 0.12 inches, handle thickness of 0.49, and a weight of 4.4 ounces. Now, let's go to the Capara. I don't know why I keep closing and opening these every time I pull them away. It'd be easier if I just left them open, right? You have a price of $188.50. So a bit more expensive. Uh, you have an S30V blade, these really nice contoured carbon scales, which are just freaking gorgeous. G10 backspacer, the wire clip that you also see again a lot on uh, Tai Chung stuff and titanium pivot. Let's do uh, the dimensions on this. Overall length, 8.25. Blade length, again, 3.6 inches. Blade thickness, very similar at 0.11 inches. And you have a handle thickness of, again, very similar, 0.51 inches. And a weight, a little bit lighter, 3.4 ounces. Now, let's get into the scoreable categories. First of all, let's start out with the design and aesthetics. Um, I will say about the Gail Bradley 2, it looks a lot better in person than it ever does in photos, in my opinion. Uh, that's part of the reason why I skipped it for so long. I didn't buy one for a couple of years after they came out. This has been out for a fair bit. Uh, now, I just wasn't in the look of it. Um, it just didn't, didn't blow my socks off, but I really do, in person, I think it looks pretty good. It looks classy. It's not anything that's like, wow, cool, but it looks pretty classy. On the other hand, the Capara... 
in the pictures again I was kind of like eh, I don't I don't know I'm not too into it but in in person I really like the look of the Capara it's um I will say it took a day or so to grow on me I don't think in the initial impressions review I was that in love with the looks of it but the more I look at it up close this carbon is just gorgeous and as I said this is real full carbon where this is the carbon fiber laminate that some people really hate it when Spyderco does that. It honestly doesn't bother me, but this is better. The full carbon is really nice. Uh, I like the look of the pocket clip. I like the titanium pivot. Looks more like a lot of the uh, higher end Chinese knives, your Wii's, your Riot, stuff like that. I, I do like the look of that. Um, and I like this red backspacer. It has not started to bother me. You know, guys, I, I am uh, kind of boring sometimes, but it is a very subdued red, and it's there for a reason. It's uh, from the uh, the designer Alistair, Phillip, or Alistair Phillips. He's a uh, an Australian gentleman. This is named after a red back spider, and that's why it's on there. And this is what his customs have the red back too. I think his custom is called the red back, uh, but it's. It's very nice. Uh, I, I just, I really do like the looks of this have really grown on me. The looks of this have grown on me. The looks of this have really grown on me, if that makes any sense. So I got to give the win on this to the Capara. Quality. Well, they're both made in the same factory. Um, yeah, the, the carbon scales feel a bit fancier, but as far as quality, as far as production quality goes, they're the same. I mean, they're both running on basically the same system. They're both on, you know, uh, bronze washers. And they're both kind of built. You know, it's, they're the same. I, I can't call a difference between them. They're both very well made, is what I'm saying. They're both very good. Uh, I, I've never had any problems, really, with the Taichung um, Spider Co's. Um, and these are the same, so gotta call it a tie that's just all there is to it blade now the the gail bradley 2 is designed by as the name would say gail bradley he, he is a literal cutting champion he's won like uh competitions and stuff for cutting things and this is designed i don't remember the name of him so i'm not going to say it so that uh, someone in the comments doesn't say that i'm wrong if i don't say it you can't say i'm wrong and this blade reflects that you are looking at i'm just going to show you here Turn on the calipers. You're looking at super thin behind the edge. I hate doing these live because it's really hard to get it. Yeah. About 18 thousandths behind the edge. Super thin behind the edge. Nice hollow grind. That's not right. I know it's thinner than that. Let's do that again, because I know I've got that wrong. Yeah, 17 thousandths behind the edge sounds a bit more right. Um, super thin behind the edge. Uh, super awesome slicer, and it's freaking M4 steel, which holds an edge forever. And uh, it's no, it is not stainless. That is a downside to it. You do have to protect it. All I did was spray it with some uh, Aegis stuff, which I don't have it it's within reach, or I'd show you. But the Aegis EDCI, uh, and uh, I've had this thing for months and months, and I've it's never gotten, and I carried a lot, and it's never gotten remotely rusty, no corrosion, no nothing. And if you do want to uh, patina it, some people like doing that. You have the option to do that. Whereas the blade on the Capara, also very slicey, not too much thicker behind the edge. I think this was 18 or 19 thousandths behind the edge, not too much thicker, and a little bit thinner blade stock. It is a full flat grind, um, but it's S30V, not going to hold an edge that long. Some people are very upset that this is S30V for 188.50. Again, we'll talk about that more in the end. Um, but still a super slicey blade. Uh, especially for Spyderco. Spyderco isn't known to always be super awesome thin behind the edge, and that's that's what makes a slicey thing. But I will say also on the Gail Bradley, I think you guys can see which way this category is going, but the tip's a bit more robust. You have that swedge there, so it doesn't show up as much in the camera. But uh, And it's M4, obviously. Blade has to go to the Gail Bradley, too. Uh, if this was XHP, which... The Tai Chung plan is known to use sometimes. Uh, it would be a much closer thing, but with this an M4 and this an S30V, 
in this nice, awesome blade design. Blade goes to the Gale Bradley 2 all day long. <clears throat> now, excuse me, ergonomics. Uh, this one, I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I literally sat here, uh, I was watching other people's YouTube videos and just picking these up. And then picking the other one up. Putting them down, you know what, and I can't, I can't decide. <laughs> so I'm going to call it a tie ergonomically, and here's why. So this feels definitely, when you first just grab it and pick it up, you initially think, oh, the Kapara is much more comfortable in the hand. Definitely got to go to the Kapara, got to go to the Kapara. But here's the here's the problems with the Kapara, is the Kapara is uh, designed for food prep. So the designer, Alistair Phillips, intentionally left, there's no jimping on this anywhere because stuff can get caught in it. Uh, if it had some jimping up here, that's all it would have taken, and it probably would have won this category because when you're choked up, it is a bit slickery, and the carbon is a bit slickery, so there's that too. It, those are the two things that made it a tie. I don't think that the Gale Bradley feels as as completely. It's perfectly comfortable, but it doesn't feel as comfortable in my hand generally as the Capara does. You can't choke up on it, but it does have some grip. That's one thing that I don't understand why people hate this uh, peel ply carbon so much because it it does give you some grip. It's got enough jimping, and yeah, I, I just got to call it a tie. I don't know. I, I couldn't really make a call. I do like that on this you can choke up for detail stuff and use your thumb up here. That's great, as it said, for food prep, uh, for general EDC stuff. I don't know if that's the bad, if that matters, but it, it does work some. Um, yeah, I just got to call it a tie. I couldn't really decide. I really sat here and fumbled with them for quite a while, and I just can't. Can't make a decision on that one. Carrie. Uh, Carrie definitely goes to the Capara. The Gail Bradley carries pretty well. Um, and this is, might be a personal thing, because I know some people hate the wire clip. But I love the wire clip. So not only is this an ounce lighter, it also has that nice deep carry wire clip and super easy for your hand to slide by. This carries a little high. Um, not, not horribly so, not as bad as some of the newer Spider Co's are, looking at you, Brower, but, uh, in Para 3, but, um, it still carries a little high, it, I, it definitely, gets, it's just easily, easily to the Kapara for this, it's a little, it's about the same height vertically in its highest point, and I think the clip on this is angled a bit better, yeah, easy win to the Kapara for the carry. Deployment, um, also, pretty easy win. I mean, this is fine. Uh, it They both run on uh, bronze washers. This is just your typical liner lock. You can spidey flick it. You can thumb flick it. You can do all those things. And it works great. There's nothing really wrong with it. Um, but uh, the only thing, I guess there's one thing wrong with it. On the Gail Bradley, when you do close it, this is very sharp. The liner lock is pretty sharp. A lot of people do tear them apart and smooth that out. It's just sharper than it needs to be. It's probably great if you got gloves on. Uh, but when you don't, it's a bit much. Uh, the Kapara is a compression lock, and a very good one. Uh, I have said before that Taichung isn't always the best at compression locks. Like, I have a um, uh, Sage 5, and it's not quite as smooth as the other Spider Echo compression locks that I have. That's also a, a Taichung made one. But this one, I did take when I got it. I, I turned the pivot back, like, a maybe not even a quarter turn, just because it was... New out the box, and I'm too uh, impatient to let them break in. And it immediately, just like any other Spider Co., and you can do all the things, Spidey flick it, thumb flick it, all that. It's, uh, I just, I, this is deployment easy. This is much more fun to have around. I like compression locks. If you hate compression locks, maybe you like that better, but uh, I don't think a whole lot of people are religiously opposed to compression locks, so... Got to go with the Gail Bradley on this. I mean, with the uh, Kapara on this. Gosh. Steve Harvey in it again. All right. Value. This is going to be a, a thing. So, upshots on the Kapara. Uh, well, first of all, we'll talk about the price again. 188.50 versus, let me make sure I get this exactly right, uh, 156. So, 30, 32 bucks difference 3250 difference 
what are you getting that's better on the uh, on the Kapara? Well, you're getting these really nice carbon handles. Maybe that's part of the reason why they tried to justify the price. You have the titanium pivot, okay. Um, but you got S30V steel. You're getting M4 on this, which is a true premium, you know, super steel. Uh, it's stuff that they usually save for sprint runs. No, the scales aren't as nice. It's carbon fiber laminate. Eh, liner lock. It's. It, I'm sure it costs more to make a compression lock than it does a liner lock. Um, but still, quality is about the same as far as fit and finish. Uh, yeah, and thirty two dollars is not an insignificant amount of money, at all. So, I gotta, I gotta call it for the GB two, for value, which. Uh, Kind of wasn't expecting to, but because I, I do kind of stick up for for S30V. I'm not an S30V apologist, but it doesn't bother me. Uh, but this is reaching a price where maybe it doesn't. It still doesn't bother me, but I could absolutely understand why people be upset about it. So, yeah, I I got to call it to the Gail Bradley too for the value and. Uh, not by a little bit. I, I would say it's a pretty significant win for that. So what does the score wind up as? Uh, this is going to be complicated. So the score winds up 3-2 to two with two ties for the Kapara. But I'm going to make a uh, judge's decision, and I'm going to wuss out and call it a tie. By my own scores, yes, the Kapara wins. But by me uh, sitting here personally... If you had to ask me which one of these to sell, if I was forced to sell one of them, there would be a coin involved. I I have no idea. I love them both. Um, I've had the Gail Bradley for much, much longer, obviously. And as I said before, they both came into my collection the same way. Things, Two knives I didn't know I needed till I got them in my hand. And uh, I would, yeah... It'd be a coin flip. I, I can't I can't possibly decide. Yes, the scores say Kapara. So I'm not completely wussing out, but as far as my own personal decision, I would call it a total tie. And it's mostly that $32 price difference. If these were the same price, I'd probably pick the Kapara, but they are not. So gotta call it a tie. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Flame me in the comments, because I know both of these knives hit. This has a whole lot of fans, because every time I mention it, people freak out about it. The Kapara is quickly gaining a lot of fans, and YouTube videos live forever. So I'm sure, sure over time, it's going to become a flame war in the comments. So uh, have at it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.